Hi guys, Spartan Septics 5 here today. Uh, today I'm doing a video, uh, it's going to be the fourth part in my, uh, fourth video in my uh, prepper series. Um, first off, just going to stay too, um, for those of you that might have already noticed, my camera equipment is fairly low budget. I don't really have, you know, the nice equipment anymore. My, I did, but it broke. So this is a cell phone video, as are the rest of the videos. So sorry for that, just deal with it. If you don't like it, go watch a different video. One and done. All right, so the title of this video is going to be To Bug In or To Bug Out. Um, I'm going to start off by def defining bugging in and bugging out. If you're not a prepper, uh, bugging in uh, would be to stay at your current location, like your house. Just to stay there either indefinitely or a bug in, bug out procedure, which is you, have, you plan to, to stay at your location for a set period of time until things calm down and then go to your bug out location where you're looking to be a little more secure um you know that that's that's what i would probably do is to do a bug in bug out um if it was a viral pandemic or something like that um, i would bug out immediately because i wouldn't risk getting sick but in a more realistic type of thing um like your power grid power grid failure uh cyber attack in the power grid which has happened in other countries before um you know, something like that where the power goes out, where there's not running water, sewer. You know, there isn't going to be any trucks in the road, no gas, nothing. Um, it's pretty much going to go back to the way it was in the uh, late 18, early night, or mid 1800s, to be honest. Um, unless you know how to create electricity, which actually isn't that difficult. I know how to do that. Um, and I will make a video. There's a few different ways you can create electricity using DC motors, uh, fan blades, um, PV cells. Uh, ferrite rods in the ground. There's, uh, I mean, that isn't that isn't very efficient, but it works. Um, but there's a lot of different ways you can make electricity, to say the least. It's not impossible. Um, whoops, pardon me. I'm having a beer here, so you know it's Saturday night. What the hell? Um, I'll go over that in a different video. But getting off topic again, like I usually do. Um, so for bugging in, what do you want? For bugging in, number one, you're going to want a decent supply of weapons and ammunition to protect yourself and your family, as you see over there, or your friends, or to supply people in your group or community that you have a plan to bug in with, or bug in within that neighborhood or community to supply them with weapons they need, um, vice versa, like they could supply you, you know, you'd have to work as a community. One of the biggest things is, is um, everybody would have to have a purpose um, as far as to be accepted into any type of post-apocalyptic dystopian community everyone would have to be good at something. You couldn't just have people that would I, what I would call eaters, that all they do is eat and shit um, and complain. Uh, those people would not be welcome. Um, but everybody usually has a set skill, whether it's car repair, weapons repair, um, electronics, um, anything. Engineering, architecture, construction, bookkeeping, nursing, anything like that, medical, anything. Um, bookkeeping, yes, I said bookkeeping. Um, that is actually very important. A lot of, not a lot of people think about that. But to itemize the rations and canned goods you have and the seeds you have and the water you have and the weapons you have, keeping inventory on everything, making sure it's distributed fairly and e equally. That's where a bookkeeper would come in actually quite well. Um, but anyway, so like I said, bugging in. Um, you're going to want a good supply of food. You don't want to just live off of canned food. If you're doing a permanent bug-in, like let's say you live in the country, you don't live in the city, you're doing a permanent bug-in where you are, you want to have your seeds, you want to start planting those seeds, um, you want to start hunting, because your can supply is your emergency food, and that is going to be eaten when, hey, it's winter, I, don't, I ran out of food. I ran out of meat, I ran out of veggies, I ran out of this. Um, or the initial, hey, I'm waiting for my shit to grow, that's what the canned food is for. I've gone over this in the other video that you don't want to eat that is a supplementary like all the time for a year because it's not the best for you. Now if you're physically active all the time, yeah, you're gonna burn it off. But uh in a you know, depending like I said, if you have a vehicle or fuel or uh where you're bugging in, I mean you might be physically active, you might not be as physically active. Um bugging out. Um now bugging out would be like, hey, um let's say we're talking about an immediate bug out situation. Um Oh shit, we just had a fucking, I don't know, Ebola outbreak somewhere, and it's killing everybody. We need to get the fuck to our bug out location. So I'm going to grab everything I could possibly fit in my vehicles. 
which is going to be a few select weapons from that locker over there, from that safe over there, as much ammo as I can fit in there, and as much food and water as I can fit in there. It's not even going to be close to everything I have, but uh, enough, you know, to keep keep us sustained for a while. Um, that's the thing about bugging out is you, you can't take everything you have. I mean, in most cases, you just can't, especially if. Uh, <coughs> Let's say, for an example, you live in an inner city apartment, you know, high-rise apartment in the middle of the city. You pretty much have two options there. Your initial option is to bug the fuck out right away before shit gets haywire, which is probably take like a half hour. Um, or to sit there for a couple months and try and bug in and pray your fucking apartment doesn't get broken into and looted and get, you get killed. That's why it's good to have a bug out bag if you live in an apartment. If you don't have a lot of space for preps, um... You know, handgun, few mags, three-day ration, three-day water, some sleeping arrangements, um, pretty much a full kit. Like um, fire starting equipment, you know, signaling equipment, maybe a, a, a three-way or two-way radio, shortwave radio. They make little handheld units now <coughs> that are pretty nice. Um, something like that. Um, in theory... Person, like I said, this is an opinion video. These are my opinions. This isn't any facts. This is just what I think. I would not ever, 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 by common sense, try to bug in permanently in the inner city. You just wouldn't have the resources. You wouldn't have anything. Um, but as far as like a bugging in, in like the outer suburbs, like I particularly, I live less than a mile from the country, from where it goes to farm fields. So, like I said, for bugging in there, I have that particular resource less than a mile away. Fields, corn, wheat, whatever, depends on what they plant. Um, also, I can bug out easily if I want to. Um, the, there isn't, the roads aren't going to be super congested where I am because I'm on the outskirts of the fucking suburbs, which is, again, very nice. Um, another thing, like let's say you bug out... Um, you're trying to bug out and you're just not, you can't, everything's congested. This is really months after. I mean, there's post, um, there's actually been some good post apocalyptic movies made or dystopian films or dystopian documentaries. Um, here's another thing if you know how to fly a plane, um, I do, um, little municipal airports, like those little strips in the country in the middle of an hour with like five hangars. Obviously, after a couple months, three or four months if everything's abandoned hey hey you know there's no electricity doesn't look like anyone's you know used it or touched it in years hey there you got a plane you can fly out and go to your bug out location um obviously you wouldn't want to turn into one of those bad guys that hey i'm gonna take this obviously no it's if it's just my opinion is if it's not really somebody's anymore and it's just sitting there maybe the owners passed away or they bugged out somewhere else or they obviously don't care about it hey if it's there it's for the taking i mean if it's out in the open hey you know you could fly that little cessna or whatever to your bug out location again not stating uh i would be one of those people that would take shit from anybody in a post-apocalyptic situation i'd be pe i'd be the one that would help people um but, but, you know, there comes a time where, hey, you're going to have to siphon gas out of a car. You're going to have to, you know, do stuff like that. I mean, obviously, if a vehicle's left abandoned on the road, the owner's probably not coming back for it. Same concept with a small aircraft or a helicopter. If it's just left sitting there, the odds are the owner's not coming back for it in a dystopian society. Just saying. Um, so that's another good skill to have. If you know how to fly a plane, even if you don't have a plane... You know, good thing to know how to do. Because you never know when you might have to do it. Um, but uh, what else am I going to go on with? Um, bugging in. Um, so you'd want to have, eventually, some type of garden complex set up. Some hydro, either a hydroponics facility indoors, which would be great for growing stuff in the winter if you had electricity. Or you'd want to have a garden outside, which obviously, in the suburbs, I got a, it's a third acre lot. So it wouldn't really be that hard to turn, tear up the yard and start using that as a garden um, to plant seeds. And seeds are crucial because, like I said, you can't live off canned food forever. And 
even if you do have that canned food, that shit will probably last for 15 years. So you want to keep that for emergency food and try and live off of fresh, decent stuff, you know. Because in the, in the end of the world, or fucking something happens, you're not going to have your cholesterol medication, your high blood pressure medication, and all that other shit that people need to take nowadays because they eat like shit. Just saying, um, you know. But, uh, but yeah, there's also, you know, if you're a prepper, I mean, I haven't gone this far. I don't currently have a bug out bag for my car. I'm looking to make one, um, but a bug out bag for your vehicle. Like, let's say you're driving home from work or you're at work and, you know, you know, like the emergency broadcast comes over, you know, so-and-so power grid attack, whatever, whatever, something else, whatever, doesn't matter what it is. And you leave work, get in your car right away, and you drive, try to start driving 20 miles back to your house. Um, you start driving, and you start driving, and then all of a sudden, stop. No more, no, no more moving, because people have gotten out of their car and started walking. Um, that's why it's good to have a bug-out bag in your car. Maybe with, hey, three-day rations. I mean, maybe even a 24-hour pack. Um, but I, I would suggest a 72-hour pack. You know, maybe with a separate handgun. Like, for someone like me, I've been collecting guns a long time. I have plenty of handguns, so I could have a specific gun I threw just in that bug out back in my back of my car and just leave that gun in there. Um, I wouldn't have to take it out unless I needed it or was going to clean it or take it to the range. It could just stay in the bug out pack. Um, you know, because if your car stops, everyone's going to be getting out wandering around. You're going to have to walk the rest of the way to your location, your home or wherever you're going. Um... And you're going to need that three-day pack because I'm going to tell you one thing. Um, if you've got to walk 30 miles to your house, yeah, that seems like that's probably pretty decently doable in a day. But if you think about all the chaos that's ensuing and, uh, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to, you know, speed walk or just jog your way there like you're doing a fucking marathon. You're going to have to sneak around. You're going to have to take ways that take longer because every, every, everything else is obstructed. You're going to want to avoid groups of people. So, yeah, a three-day pack to travel 30 miles would, you know, kind of make sense. You know, you figure, hey, 10 miles a day, you have to find somewhere safe to sleep. I don't know. Then again, every situation is different. So these are my opinions. Like I said, I'm not telling you, hey, a three-day pack is the only thing that will work or, hey, you know, you're just stupid if you don't have one because, hey, I don't even have one yet. I'm going to make one, but I don't have a bug out bag in my car. Because um, I'm kind of, I, I was in a null for prepping for a while. I prepped for two years, and then I just stopped and didn't care anymore. And was like, what the hell am I doing this for? And then I'm like, well, what the hell? Why did I stop? I mean, it's like, you know, I want to be prepared. So in the past six months, I've kind of started, well, not like past three months, actually, I've started kind of, you know, getting more medical supplies, more food, water, um, stuff like that. Um, and it's, it's just as simple as going to your local grocery store. Now, yes, you can buy the MREs and those wise food sons of bitches. Yes, it's dehydrated food as an MRE, but you look at the cost of those things, they're like seven bucks a pop per meal, per little thing. I can go to the grocery store, get my ass a can of tuna uh, and olive oil for 70 cents and get my ass... You know, maybe a can of uh, peach or a can of peaches, something with sugar in it. I could pretty much build an MRE out of canned goods for about two fifty. You know. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm I would like MREs, but for ninety seven dollars for twenty four of them, I'm just not going to pay that. And those aren't the uh, those aren't the combat individuals either. Those are the single rations like the three a day rations so you do 24 of those you have to eat three of them a day to be supplemented and you're probably going to be pretty fucking constipated because us mres just suck compared to the rest of the world um yeah i'd rather just eat canned shit maybe get a, sm a couple cases of mres just for like light treks where you need to trek out somewhere and walk somewhere where you're not having to haul you know the heavier cans but Again, that's my opinion. Um, but yeah, just a quick little video on bugging in or bugging out. Got a response video or anything else you want to add? Uh, comment, concern, you know, whatever. Hit me up with a message, Spartan 5 out.